Oh, that was in my file. I saw your message at like 12, so I figured it's too late to call you back. I right. let you know. I got a quick question. Yeah. Right here. Sure. The, uh... so come over here and take a look at this right here. So the uh, where's that problem? Dun, 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 uh, okay, so it's going to be closing on the March 11th. It looks mm -hmm. like yeah. So does the interest start accruing the next on day? On the 11th. It's on closing day is when it starts. Then why? I believe. Then why? Because then the answers in the book disagree with everything. Because I, I started counting it on the 12th, mm -hmm. and I'm getting the correct answer. If I do it like you did in the video, mm -hmm. counting the 11th, I get I get all the wrong answers. Mm -hmm. So, huh. and that's the only thing that I had an issue with because I was watching your your lesson mm -hmm. and I was you know I understand the dates I and everything. Messed that up. I thought it was the day of. Uh, but so right here, mm -hmm. I did it. Uh, I did it from the 12th to the 31st, which is 20 days. Mm -hmm. You know, 19 plus 120, right. and I'm getting all the correct results, but according to the publisher. So okay. I'm asking you, you're more experienced than me. No, I thought it was the day of, but I'll double check. Uh, for now, let's go through the publisher. Just let them know, hey, don't count the closing day. Um, it's because you got class right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just go with um, not closing day, and I'll double check and I'll text you. It turns then, out the yeah, publisher. Yeah, we can always wrong. we can always change it later on. But... Yeah, but that's to. Uh, Start them off right so they don't have to change it later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, let them know for now. Don't count closing day. If that was a screw up. Um, I'll double check. Uh, yeah. And then I need answer. to talk to you maybe during second about, I don't know what you're experiencing in respect of uh, all your students, but there's a big decline yes. in terms of attendance and productivity. So yes. can we chat on a uh, second? Sure. So yeah. Right now, there's not. Yeah, I'll run over here after uh, our class at first. Yeah, let's try to figure out how we can uh, remedy that. We only have two or three weeks to go. Yeah. We got a few more sections in seven, then we got to do a final review. On, we got to talk do we do a chapter seven test and a final, or do we just jump into the final? Yeah. So let's talk about all those things. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Good morning. How are you doing? So it's uh like uh Gilbert's floor, Matt to his hand. He was still with here. Good morning, old Matt. Good to see that. This is just a quick reminder to make sure you have completed the self screening health assessment prior to coming onto campus. If you did not receive your email, your teacher will have a QR code for you to use. Thank you and have a great day. It's a different now than class. That's class. So come on up here. So let's group up. Uh, if you, I only have like five people here. One, two, three, four. We'll probably fill this area right here. That way you guys sit next to one another. You guys can talk to one another. That way I can hear you too. How you been? Um, pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. How was your wife's father? Uh, he's not doing too well. I'm going to go see him tonight for the first time and uh, take care of him tonight. Tonight's my turn. We're rotating uh, family members seeing him because there's only two people allowed in the hospital. And go ahead and log in while we're talking here. Um, so it's it's tough, you know. Brain surgery is no joke. 
might just seem to so fast when you have something serious happen to you. That's a good one. Appreciate that. Thank you. If you had a family member go through some major trauma like that, <laughs> not like that. My mom had lung cancer before she died. That took her quickly. It happened about a couple years ago. And then I saw my dad. And then, then my wife's dad, you know, major brain cancer is brain tumor. It's, it's like it's all hitting us. And Good to see you here. Go ahead and uh, log in as normal. We're together as, as we usually do. Yeah. It's weird being here on Tuesday because I'm usually here Thursday. Yeah. I wish we were here every day with all the kids. With everybody here, that'd be kind of nice, you know? Next, I bring your work books, I hope. Yeah. Okay. So we have some of the apps are which they play. There's a lot. And I like to do judgment this and also like just not want to Yeah, so there's going to be needing Desmos and it works with everything. So you may use your phones for Desmos or the computer, either one. guys yeah. okay oh, there we go all three of you guys okay ten 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 hopefully we have more than three people. Even if uh, if there's only three of us here, here, I suggest you sit next to the grill so that you guys can talk to one another and speak with one another too. That's part of the other class that we're working with too. You can show it up. For some reason, financial algebra, everybody, most everybody except you and Matthew, shows your hand all the time. My MRWC class. 50% of the kids or more shared the trouble too. It's really weird. So, you know, difference in classes. Is Ion a guy? Yeah. Yeah. That's a nut. Yeah. Yeah, she's a little more. She's a top-based class, so it's totally different. 
Some ones I really enjoy this. I, I enjoy teaching both of these. It's been fun. When my first year teaching this course, it's been fun as well. Watch the over here because I don't think we're going to have anybody here. So we're going to the girls. You know, chat too, during the class when you guys are working on your calculations here. You guys can talk to one another. You know, it's kind of like normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Point each other out. Because I'm going to ask you guys to do the calculations you know, like they normally do. Maybe you guys can compare and check the answers. Oh, how'd you sneak in here? Oh, you're real quick. Oh, good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, we got okay, guys. I want you guys to to one another. I want all three of you guys to line up over here. So, get close to one another. Let's log in. That way, you guys can compare your answers. And Show up. Get everybody in class. Log in, get your workbooks out, get Desmos ready to rock and roll. We're going to work together like we normally do. Now that I'm back. All right. Let's bring everybody in. Okay. Look at this. Look who showed up. Preston's in the house. Good morning, Preston. Can you hear me, Preston? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Cameron, Braden, Tyler, you guys turn on uh, your videos here, your cameras. Let's get everything ready to go here. You're gonna be working with Desmos and, and in our workbooks here, and you guys are gonna be helping me do everything. All of the calculations that is. Ethan, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Doing great. All right, so everybody get your workbooks ready, Desmos ready. You're going to be submitting your Desmos work today because it's there's a lot of, lot of calculation here today. And uh, we'll get started once I get everybody in the house. If you're going to be participating with me at home, you need your cameras on. That's not a request, that's a demand. <laughs> I want to be able to see you guys. Good to see you guys here. Cords, there's uh, some power sticks everywhere. If you guys need some power, you need some power. Here. And gentlemen, there's cords around here. You can use this one here if you guys need some power. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Braden. Braden and Cameron, where are you guys? Like I said, I want to. Oh. I'm right here. I just want to switch to my computer really quick. Okay. All right. Cameron, where are you, buddy? Okay. So let's bring in Tyler here. We got Braden. We're going to be working on uh, section four. And we're going to be talking about the mathematics of purchasing a home, the, the mathematics of a mortgage, which we kind of talked about last semester. We did an Excel spreadsheet on that. So this should ring a bell, but we're going to actually do math on it here in a moment. When you guys have uh, your workbook and your Desmos up and ready, uh, just the scientific one, you don't need the graphing one. Uh, just type in ready to rock in the chat. We can get started here. For everybody online, you got to have your camera on. I want to make sure that you guys are actually there because been having been struggling actually with my seniors. Uh, I sent out a message yesterday, a very concerning one, that uh, a lot of seniors are dropping off. They're not attending class. The, 
there you go. So many seniors are not being productive. We're not doing our work. And it's very, very concerning given the fact that we only have three weeks left and you guys still have a final and we still have to end strong. So there we go. Thank you, Aaliyah and Natalie. Ethan, you guys are ready. I know that you guys are ready to rock in the class here. That's good. But I wanna make sure that you guys uh, end successfully this year. I know it's been rough. It's been rough on everybody, including the teachers. I, I know it's difficult to do everything online. It's not as motivating, I get that, okay? There's a lot of new things that we had to deal with this year that um, we've never dealt with. You've never dealt with it. I've been teaching 29 years. I've never dealt with this. Uh, but, you know, I do my best, uh, you know, give you the, provide you the resources that you guys need. Like last week when I wasn't here on Thursday, I produced a full video on section three and over every single problem in section three. And I still have 50% of the seniors not doing it. And that's not good. Uh, so you guys have got to stay strong. You got to work, persevere, and through this hard time and make yourself proud. And the only way you can make yourself proud is by doing it. Same thing with me, same thing with you. And so uh, I encourage you guys to stay strong. And if you need extra assistance, uh, just talk to me on the side. Get to, I've been talking to seniors in the evening uh, with their individual needs and uh, and I've been learning about things that are going on that are being difficult, that are extremely difficult. And if you need to talk to me on the side in the evening, uh, if there's anything I can do to help you guys out, then message me and remind. We can talk privately in the evening. I'll be in the hospital tonight with my father-in-law, but <clears throat> I will be able to go in and out and I'll be able to meet with you uh, in the evening throughout the week, even if it's not Tuesday or, or Thursday. I, I, I meet my MRWC kids on off days. I can meet you guys on the off days, meaning Wednesday and uh, Friday, even on the weekend. I've met people over the weekend as well. So my, my encouragement to you guys is to stay coming to class. Keep coming to class. Keep working hard. We have uh, your final remaining. And I have to talk to Mr. Alex whether we're going to give you a section seven test or excuse me, chapter seven test in addition to the final. We're not quite clear yet. I'll find out uh, today after, when I talk to him what we're going to do, and then we'll lay out the rest of the year schedule here uh, by Thursday so that you guys know what to expect. <clears throat> so hang in there. So is everybody ready on the screen? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to get started here. I'm looking at all of you guys in class. Are we ready? Okay. And so let's get started here. There's some, uh, you know, some mathematics that that are required to deal with the home and everything we've done before, the, the monthly payment formula and all the, the mathematics we've done before, it's just a question of uh, applying it to something new. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna be using Desmos. We're gonna skip number one as stated in the, uh, in Canvas right there. Oh, where's my pen here? Okay, so we're gonna start at number two. So let me grab a pen here, let's get started. So we're gonna skip this one. We're gonna start off with number two. Again, like I said, you guys are gonna be doing the calculations here and I may be calling upon you just go randomly around the room. Uh, for my people in class uh, or even at home, you might wanna use Desmos on your phone so you can do it side by side. So if you have Desmos loaded on your phone, you could do that. Or you can use Desmos uh, in the tab like I do, you can use it on your computer. So either way, whatever you're, comfortable in doing and everybody get out a piece of paper right now if you need extra graph paper go ahead and get one at home everybody grab some extra paper because there's no way you can do all your work on this in this little space provided hey good morning so let's take a moment and get some extra paper out because you're going to have to show all setups and submit all your work and there's no way you can fit it in these teeny little spaces here in the workbook we can put our answers here, but you're going to have to do all your work to the side. All right, so take a moment, get some paper out. And ladies and gentlemen, there's extra paper in the middle of the classroom if you need it. Okay, go ahead and grab some. Good morning. So this is this is financial algebra, yes? Okay. Um, so come in, come in. You don't need that, though. That's my MRWC. Yeah, I was going to say. You, you, you don't want to do that. So grab some graph paper. Let's get logged in real quick. Get your workbooks out. Hey, everybody online, hang on for a second. I just had some students come in. We're getting ready to start here. 
you're going to need your workbook title your graph paper uh, seven four like we uh, the same thing as what we do here you're going to scan all this and submit everything as you as you work through it here. There we go there's some extra pencils in there the small sharpener works. Okay. Everybody online, please be patient. We're just getting set up and ready in class here. If you guys need anything, let me know. I, I have ton, you know, extra supplies everywhere. Pencils, paper, and all that kind of good stuff. Mateo, have you been doing any uh, co competition? Yeah, I actually had a Arcadia Invitational last weekend. Um, and we did pretty well. Our four by eight got second, our DMR won, and I got third in the open invitational eight. So right now I think I'm sixth in the state for the 800. So not too shabby, but yeah, you know, top 10 to do. Very good. Proud of you. Anybody else uh, doing any uh, sports or events that you can tell me about other than Mateo? No other sports, no other athletes in here? Okay. Okay. Uh, Ethan, you still working out? Of course. Let me see your guns. Always up to kid. <laughs> Let me see him. No. Let me see him. Come on, come on. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. We got to laugh a little bit, right? All right. Makes, makes learning fun. Okay, so here we go, guys. Let's get started here. If I can see through my glasses with this crazy mask. My glasses keep fogging up. Don't like this. Okay. Uh, let's get started. So Liz and Nick are buying a home, a uh, $725,000 home. That's a pretty expensive home right there. They have been approved for a 3.25% APR. There's your interest rate uh, with a 30-year mortgage. Okay, that's typical. Loans are usually 15, 20, or 30 year. And most people pick 30 year loans to keep the monthly payments down. They made a 20% down payment and will be closing on March 11th. Okay, so the fact that it's closing on March 11th is important. Okay, we wanna be able to calculate the interest for one year, assuming that there's no payments you know, throughout the year. Let's just calculate the interest, assuming there are no payments made throughout the year. So we're gonna be using the uh, principal times rate times time. Formula. So let's put that down in red and then we'll apply it. Principal times rate times time. This is assuming that we do not make payments throughout the year. We're just going to calculate the interest that's uh, accrued during that time. Okay. There we go. All right. Kayla's with us now. Very good. Okay. So the principal we know is 725,000. Are the interest rate? R is 3.25% or 0 0.0325. You got to shift that decimal left two places. Oh, Tyler, I just uh, got your message there on the chat here. I didn't, I didn't see that earlier, Rugby. So Tyler, before we get started here, what's going on with Rugby? Have you played, uh, played lately? Have you had any yeah, matches? So, um, I was probably, I don't know, I want to say like two, maybe three weeks ago, I got back from Houston on a uh, tournament game that I just finished playing with. I play with two separate teams. I play with one team out of Orange County. Um, and that team is top 10 in the nation right now. And we're going to nationals in Kansas City come June. Wow. And then nice. I play with a select team that plays basically academy. And they travel and go pretty much everywhere. Well, that's exciting. You keep me updated on that. All right. I wish you the best on that. Thank you. Yeah, that's a tough sport. <clears throat> okay. It's like football with no pads. Okay. Cool. You guys just keep me updated on all the cool things like that. I like to hear about those things that are going on in your life. That is cool. Okay. So back to the interest here. Principles, 725,000. Interest rate, 0 0.0325. T is the number of years. So we've got uh, we're dealing this for one year. So T is one year. T equals uh, one in this case, because we want to calculate the interest for one year only. All right. So get ready to calculate. I'm going to call upon you guys. So we're going to take 725,000 right here times the interest rate 0 0.0325. Okay. 
times one because t is one year. We want the interest for only one year. So times one, all right? Everybody work on that. Again, you guys, if you work simultaneously, you learn something, okay? Copying and just watching the lesson here doesn't help you too much. You gotta calculate. So get your calculators going. Right here, if you work with me step-by-step step on all of this, you'll learn quite a bit, okay? <clears throat> okay, so let's just go around the room a little bit here. Uh, Tristan, can you help me out? What, what are you coming up with here for the interest for that one year? Speak up when you're ready. Okay, so let's verify that. That's weird. I, uh, so 725,000, let me just verify everything here. So I don't have everything written down. So times 0 0.0325, okay. There you go. So 23,000, hang on for a second here. I just wanna double check something here. Oh, <laughs> okay, no wonder it's, uh, I got to back up here. Hang on, I forgot to calculate something here. Not starting off too well. Let me backtrack here for a second here. I'm getting a little uh, uh, sidetracked on all the current events here. So, okay, yeah, we're purchasing a $725,000 home. It's been approved for the interest rate for a 30-year mortgage. That's great, but they're gonna make a 20% 20, 20 down payment. Okay, we gotta calculate that first. So let's, we're gonna redo this right here. I apologize, guys. If you wrote in pen, just cross it out. We gotta calculate the down payment first because we're not financing the entire amount. We're gonna take off the down payments. So let's go off to the side and figure out a down payment, sorry. Uh, slow down is worth okay down payment 20 percent. so we got to calculate the down payment 20 percent. we got to take 20 percent of the purchase price which is seven hundred twenty-five thousand. what they're going to do is they're going to take that 20 percent, put it down or they're going to finance the rest so we got to calculate that first so we're going to take 20 percent, which is 0.20 times seven hundred twenty-five thousand, to figure out what we're financing and then we'll base the interest off of that so i apologize you guys i Got to read closer. We got a down payment first. Everybody calculate 20% of 720,000. And then uh, Tristan, we're going to redo that calculation because the number was off. Their principal is not 725,000. It's going to be whatever that is minus the down payment. So we'll redo that here in a minute. Okay. So let me, uh, uh, Talia, what, what are you getting for that 20%? Okay. So what happens, this is 145,000. They're gonna put that down on the house, okay? So what they're gonna do is they're gonna, instead of financing the entire amount, what people do is they put a 20% down. So they're not gonna be financing this, the full 725,000. We're gonna, we're gonna finance the 725,000 minus the down payment, okay? So what we need to do for the loan amount here, loan amount, we got to take our 725,000, what's called the purchase price, and we got to subtract that down payment. This typically happens in any, in any home loan. You have to put something down. Usually there's, well, I've never heard of a loan uh, where you don't put anything down. Uh, at least all the houses that I've bought throughout my life, and I've bought quite a few as I've moved around from place to place, you always put a down payment on the house, and that's usually a percentage of the purchase price. So in this case, uh, Liz and Nick, you know, they're going to put a big chunk down at 20% is quite a big, big, big number, as you, can, you guys can see. All right, Valentina, can you help me out with the difference right there? What's 725,000 minus the 145? Yeah. 
there you go, 580,000. So this is the amount of the loan that we're gonna finance, okay? So what we're gonna do is we calculate the down payment first. We take 20% of the purchase price, which is 145,000. We subtract that from the purchase price and this is the what we finance. So Tristan, back to you now. We're gonna finance that. We're gonna base the interest on that number. So we're gonna redo it. So we're gonna take 580,000. We're gonna multiply that by your interest rate, which is 0.0. Uh, 325, and it's for one year. We want to calculate this for one year only. So I'm going to put a one in there just because it's for one year. So Tristan, can you redo that right there, buddy? There you go. All right, so $18,850 per year. This is a yearly amount of interest if, if we did make any payments for that one year. Everybody online, are we good? Because I apologize, I made that, just want to correct my little... Uh, Mistake there earlier, meaning that I didn't calculate the down payment. In class, are we good? Okay. So what we need to do now is calculate the daily interest. So if it's 18,850 per year, and we wanna figure out per day, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? What's your thoughts on you guys, people online and in class? What do we do? How do we go from annual, that's an annual amount, to a daily amount? What do we do with that number? Divide by what? Divide by 365. Very good. So let's uh, let's do that. So let's take um, well let's 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 take the 580, 580,000. Okay, times 0 0.0325, and we're going to divide this by 365, or mul simply multiply it by one 365th, which is basically what you just said. Uh, instead of the time being one year, the time is one day out of 365, so it's a fraction. So basically what you said is just divide by 365, we're going to be doing that. Okay, so let's do that. Let's enter it in, you guys. So let's take 580, work with me, 580,000 that is. We're going to multiply by 0 0.0325, and then we're going to divide it by 365. Because we're talking about one day out of 365 days out of the year. So we divided by 365. And we got to round this a little bit here because we're dealing with money. This is $51.64, okay? So Shannon, you were, uh, some of the, um, Summer and a few people in class said uh, divide by 365, she was agreeing with that. So we get about 51.64, so $51.64. This is per day, okay? This is a daily amount. Okay, now the reason why you need to know the daily amount is to answer the next question. Okay, so it says, how much should they expect to pay prepaid interest at closing? Now, this right here can only be understood if you watch the lesson, okay? And I wanna just take a sidetrack for a second because there's too many students, too many seniors in both of my classes. I have about 70 students that are not watching the videos. And that is a problem because you can't answer simple questions like this unless you watch the lesson and get the full idea of what's going on. So you have to know what it means that, you know, the prepaid interest. And Mr. Alex, when he's producing the video, goes through all of that. So if you're, if you're not watching the, the videos, I really encourage you to do that because some of the questions, even though they're simple, cannot even be answered unless you watch the lesson. And that should make sense. So I encourage you guys to watch the lesson go through it, and then, you know, coming to class, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier because you're going to know what's going on. Okay, we got to figure out how many days there are from basically March 12th to the end of the month, because what they're going to do is they're going to calculate the daily interest, multiply it by the number of days, and they're going to, they're going to ask you to pay for all that. So if it closes on March 11th, we need to figure out how many days there are in the for the rest of the month. So from March 12th to, to what? How many days does uh, March have? 29, 28, 20, or 30, or 31 in March? You guys agree with that? You guys got to give me some feedback here, yeah? Okay, so March has 31 days. So we got to calculate how many days there are from March 12th through the 31st. So let's let's write that out. So March... 12th through the 31st. 
we got to figure out how many days there are right there because interest starts accruing on the day after closing all the way to the end of the month. And you have to pay all of that up front. It's prepaid. You got to pay for all that accrued interest. So how many days is that? Can you guys go to the chat real quick? Tell me how many days there are from the 12th to the 31st. You got to include the 12th. Everybody online, jump in. Everybody go to the chat real quick. How many days are there from the uh, March 12th, the day after closing, till the end of the month? <clears throat> okay. So, yeah. So just be careful here. If you subtract 31 or 12 from 31, you get 19, but you got to include the day of the 12th. So you always add one. So that's equal to 20 days. So let's write down 20 days. If you write that out, you can verify that, but that's 20 days. And what you have to do is you have to prepay this interest. So what you have to do is you have to take your 20 days and you have to multiply by your daily interest, which we just calculated it. So uh, the total here, the total interest should be equal to 20 times this number right here, 5164. Start working on that, everybody. So in a loan, there, even though the loan closes on the, the 11th and you're gonna get your keys in the next couple of days, it, it takes a couple of days to finalize things. So you can probably move in on the 13th after the loan closes. You're still gonna to have to pay the pre, what's called prepaid interest, which is the interest accrued over the rest of the month, even though it hasn't happened yet. Okay, this happens in any loan. So Preston, let me work with you now. Like I said, everybody's working simultaneously here. Just turn on your mic. Let me know what you're getting. 20 times 5164. Yeah. Everybody's got to participate here. Let me know when you're ready, Preston. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, good. I can hear that voice. Talk to okay, me. Okay, good. Um, 1,032.8. Okay, so 1,032. You said 0.8, so that's 80 cents. Okay, very good. So you guys, if you if you were looking, uh, Liz and Nick here, uh, you would have to pay that much into the loan in advance. It's called prepaid interest towards the loan. Okay, that's number two. All right, so you calculate the daily interest. You multiply that by the number of days in for the rest of the month after the closing date. So this right here, the closing date is really important because we're calculating the day after that to the end of the month. So this portion right here uh, is important for part C. Okay. You guys go ahead and, you know, you, you speak up if you guys have questions that, you know, as we go through, because this, obviously no one's bought a home yet. You guys are too young. This won't happen for another 10 years for most of you guys until you get a, you know, obviously graduate, get a job, a really good one, and then you buy your first home. But this is all important stuff. This all happens. Okay. Number three, uh, number three is similar to two and C, two C. So I'm gonna let you guys do this one on your own, on your own. I'm gonna do like the key problems like I normally do. Uh, so we're gonna to shift to number four. Number four and five are similar. So I'll do four and you guys can do number five on your own. And again, speak up if you have questions. Don't be silent out there, guys. Uh, you know, get involved. Cause you really wanna really set a goal in class to really fully understand what you're doing so that you can finish the lesson on your own, the ones that we don't do. And then if you need additional assistance, you can always you know, see me you know, intervention and whatnot, but you want to be able to want to finish the lesson on your own. Okay, number four is a little bit different. So Lars has been approved for a $420,000 20-year mortgage. That's the length of the loan at an APR of 5.125%. So that's five and one eighth percent. Got to calculate the monthly payment. Okay, this is going to take you back in time. We need the monthly payment formula. Okay, so 
uh, -da 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 -da, multi payment formula. Let's put that up here. Let's put it in red first. And then we'll, we'll put in the numbers here in a minute. So it's whatever the multi payment is found by taking your principal times R divided by uh, N times one plus R divided by N raised to the NT power, all divided by one plus R divided by N raised to the NT power minus one. That's your monthly payment formula from, uh, and I think it's chapter three, if I remember correctly. I don't know. It's, we did this before quite a while ago. So yes, you are going to have to remember the key things that you've learned in the past. Okay, so we, we the principal here is 420,000. We know the interest rate, R is 0 0.05125. Keep track of your digits right there. And it's a 20, 20 year mortgage. So T is 20 here. So let's pause right there. The exponent is always N times T. And, and this is a monthly payment, so N is 12. So N is 12 because it's a monthly number here, 12 months. It's not quarterly. We're not paying quarterly here. We're not paying daily. We're paying monthly. You pay all mortgages monthly. So N is always 12. So we need to calculate right now, you guys, how many months there are in 20 years. Tell the person next to you in class, how many months are there in uh, 20 years? Yell it out, guys. Yeah, 12, there you go. Okay, 240 months. So 20 years, 20 years. I've always done this every, you know, even back in chapters two and three, when we were working on compounded interest and everything, I always calculate the total number of months. So uh, 20 years is equal to 240 months. Okay, that's going to be your exponent in this equation. This is why I said you guys need, um, need extra paper because there's no way to fit all this stuff in here. Okay, so let's calculate this. Here we go. So we, oh, uh, you got to get the right number here. So we're dealing with a four hundred twenty thousand dollar house times R divided by N. So R is your interest rate. So point zero five uh, one two five divided by N, which is twelve because we're dealing with monthly times one plus point zero five one two five divided by twelve. raised to the 240th power because there's 240 months. So we're going to be compounding this 240 times. This is the number of months here, guys. Number of months. All divided by 1 plus 0 0.05125 divided by 12 to the 240th power. Hopefully this uh, rings a bell because we've done this many times before in prior chapters. And then don't forget the minus 1 because if uh, you do, uh, your calculation will be totally off. So what we need to do is calculate this in decimal. So get to work. Everybody enter this in. And on this one here, I want everybody to put your result in the chat. Let's use this a little bit after you calculate. Make sure you round it to the nearest penny too. So that's the nearest hundredth. This is the monthly payment for a 20 year loan at 5.125%. Let me know what you're getting and uh, make sure you round it to the nearest uh, penny, the nearest hundredth. I don't see any answers yet in the chat. Come on, guys. 
you guys got to speed up a little bit here. You guys got to participate because I'm not going to finish this calculation until you guys put some numbers in here. Agree or disagree with the values. And if you disagree, make sure you let me know. Because that would probably indicate that you're not using Desmos correctly if you're not uh, agreeing with the numbers uh, that are coming up here. So let me validate that. I'm going to finish my calculation here too on the screen. And like I said, make sure you subtract one and then round. So I agree with you guys, $2,800.90. Okay, so let's put that in. Okay, so there's your monthly payment for this guy. So $2,800.90. If you have questions on the setup or technology, uh, you know, just speak up, you guys. I can always help you out no matter where you're at. You just have to be honest with yourself and honest with me and let me know where your, where your questions are. <clears throat> okay. Now, out of this monthly payment, some of it goes to interest and some of it goes to the principal. This is what Mr. Alex was talking about in the video as he went through it here. So what we need to do is calculate the daily interest uh, or the interest for the first month. It says, how much interest would you expect to pay a loan for the first month? Underline first month. The, the keyword is first. Kind of hard to calculate it for, for the second month right now because you need to know what that happens in total. But we're going to calculate it for the first month only. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go off to the side and we're going to uh, we're going to use the we're going to do something similar to what we did in two number two part A using principal times rate times time. So let's go off to the side right here. Actually, we can fit it all in through here. So here we go. So interest equals principal times rate times time. The principal, the initial principal is forty uh, four hundred twenty thousand. The interest rate is given 0.05125. You got to be careful here. It says for the first month. Now, T is typically in years. So use your common sense here, guys. If we're, if we want to calculate the interest, not for one year, but for one month. So T is in years. So what fraction of the year? I can hear you guys. Yeah, there's 12 months a year, right? So if T is always in years and you want to figure out the interest for a month, then the fractions T has got to be equal to 112, which Shannon and Alyssa agree with you. Okay, so 112, right in 112 here. Again, T is in years. In fact, let's say in the margin, put that in. T is number of years. It's always years. And so if they're asking you for the first month only, which they are, okay, then T has to be 112, 112 of a year. Okay, so go ahead and make that calculation here. So let's let's jump into Desmos and let's calculate that interest for the first month because part of your payment goes to interest and the rest goes to principal. And that's the whole point of this problem. All right, so go ahead and start working on this. Type in 420,000, multiply it by your interest rate. All right, and finish up. Jaden, let me uh, work with you right now here. Okay, a little bit here. Let me know what you're getting when you're ready. Yeah, I got um, 1793.75. Oh, okay. All right. So times, let me see, times one divided by 12. I agree with you. Okay, $1,793.75. Very good. So $1,793.75. This, this goes, this is interest. Now, so part of your payment, your monthly payment's $2,800.90. So $1,793.12 goes to interest, the rest goes to principal, okay? So when you wanna calculate your principal, you gotta, you gotta subtract the two. So it says, how much, look right here. So how much will go towards the principal? Here we go. So the principal, this is the amount that you're paying off on the loan, okay? You gotta take your monthly payment, which we know above, you got to take the 2,890 cents, okay? And subtract the interest that goes to the bank. Because remember, it costs money to, to get a loan. 
So part of your monthly payment goes towards the interest, which means that's the amount you pay for the bank, which is $1,793.12. And the remaining part of it goes to pay off your loan and it's called principal. Okay. Mr. Ainsworth. Yeah. The, um, the one, so 1,000. Yeah. It's, it's 75 cents. It's not 12. Yeah. I don't know why I put, I don't know why I put uh, 12 there. It's 75 cents. I just saw your note. Thank you very much. I'm being a little meatball today. Okay. So let me fix this here too. So 75 cents. There we go. Okay. Thanks for helping me out. Okay. So we got to subtract this and this is what goes to pay off the loan. So Mateo, help me out with the principal here, buddy. Um, the principal would be one second. Just subtract the two, the monthly payment minus your interest. Uh, 1,007.15. There you go. Okay, so let me just verify that. Okay, so $1,007.15. Okay, very good. So $1,007.15. That goes towards the loan. That's So you're paying off the loan over time, guys. So every time you make a monthly payment, part of it goes to interest. In fact, most of it goes to interest, $1,793.75. And the rest of the monthly payment, which is about a little over a thousand, goes to pay off the loan. So in the beginning of any home loan, most of it goes to the bank. All right. It's called interest payments. Okay, now that's a very key problem. And this is the essence of what happens in the, the entire lesson right here. And number five is similar to number four. This one's on your own. Do you have, let's pause here. Any questions on number four? Because you're going to have to apply it to number five. Let me, let me give you guys time to reflect on, on what we just did right there. We calculated the monthly payment, then we calculated the interest, and then we subtracted the interest from the monthly payment to get the principal. Three key steps in the entire lesson, especially on the next page. Give me some feedback. How are we doing online and how are we doing in the classroom? Give me a thumbs up or down or ask questions. Talia? in uh, Haven, Summer, how we doing girls? Yeah, gentlemen in the back, we good? Kayla, are we good? Okay, online, any questions? I saw you, Natalie, we're good there. Anybody have any questions online? I just wanna double check here before we apply a little bit more. Raiden, are we all good, buddy? Okay. Colson, I can't see you, how you doing? Okay, let's go to the back side because number five, you're going to be working on your own. Let's uh, let's see what what number six and seven is going to be like. So let's see. Oh, we got to do number six. Okay, this is a different one here. Okay, so Hillary was told uh, that based upon the price per home, her approximated closing costs. Well, look at this. Approximated closing costs would range from eleven thousand six hundred to twenty or forty thousand six hundred. What's the price per home? The only way you can answer this question is if you watch the lesson. So I need someone to give me some input here. For those people that watched the video and took notes, what is the range of the percentage of the closing costs when you buy a home? I wanna see if anybody watched and listened to the video because this is a simple question to answer if you watch the lesson. I need two percentages. It goes from what to what? It's actually much lower. If it was 25% of the, the loan, then no one would be able to buy a house. <laughs> it's actually it's actually a small percentage. Does anybody remember from the lesson? You obviously watched the lesson. Okay. See, that's what I mean, you guys. And this is why I want everybody to really start going in there. So very good, Kayla, between two and 6%. Let's write that down, you guys. 
So closing costs are between two and 6% of the purchase price. Let's put that out in red. Okay, so closing costs, they're always a percentage, okay? Range from, range from two, I'll put it up here, two to 6% of the purchase price. Now it says, what's the price of the home? And we don't know what that is. So let's call it X, okay? So let's say X is the purchase price. So this number here, this number here is 2% and this is 6% of the purchase price. So what you guys have to calculate is that 2% 2, 2 of the purchase price X has to be equal to that 11,600. So how do you how do you solve this? Let's go off to the side. So two percent of whatever the house price is is going to be the eleven thousand six hundred, or we could solve six percent of the purchase price equals the forty thousand six hundred. We can solve either one. We're going to get the same purchase price. So how do we solve this? And I'll take input. Oh, and then Natalie and Aaliyah, you guys were you guys were in there. Uh, Aaliyah was in the video. He said two to six, but you were close. Natalie, you were right on the video. Um, how do you solve this? What do we do? Where are you guys chime in? Tell me your thoughts. You got 2% times X equals 11,600. What do you, how do we step that up? Use your common sense with percentages. What do we always do with percentages? You guys speak up for me. Decimals. Decimals. We're Valentina. So what's what's two percent as a decimal? Yeah. So we got to solve this. Let's do it. You change it to a decimal. So point zero two x equals eleven thousand six hundred. Boom. I need people to jump in online, you guys. Let's convert to a decimal, Leah. Very good. Now what? You guys should start using your mics. Let everybody. If we use our mics and vocalize in class, we can speed things up and get through a lot more material here. Now we're rocking. See, that's the kind of thing. Okay. I'm glad you got some energy in here somewhere. Okay, everybody work on that. So divide by 0 0.02. This should be a pretty good size number here. So Rebecca, you were correct on that. Let me know what you're coming up with, Rebecca. Um, on that should be a pretty good size number because we're talking about a purchase price of a home. There you go. Well done. So 580,000. So when you do the arithmetic here, the purchase price is $580,000. That's the purchase price of the home according to these closing costs. So yeah, it's going to cost you guys like 12 grand just to finalize your house between 12 and 12 grand and, and 41. Buying a, buying a home is not cheap, and it requires you guys to come up with some uh, some cash in the beginning. Okay, I'm talking anywhere from twelve thousand to fifty thousand dollars to to buy a home. That's why I tell my son to save, save, save. You know, stay home as long as possible. <laughs> Seriously, get a job, stay home, build up money, and then move out. Okay. Okay. Now, numbers seven, eight, and nine are all related. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to do number seven with you. We're going to use the skills that are that we talked about in number uh, in number four. OK, in number four. And so if you know how to do number seven, then numbers eight and nine are doable. So these right here, these are going to be on your own. And it's going to be based upon number seven. So let's work out number seven. Uh, together let's go step by step and then uh you guys should be able to do eight and nine on your own so really get involved here uh i'm gonna have to do all my work on the side so this is going to be number seven here we go 
So make sure as we do this that you participate, do all your calculations. And if you, if you have any questions, don't wait till the end. You stop me as we go because all the skills in number seven are gonna be used in eight, nine, and so on. Okay, so here we go. Lower and Rich have been approved for a $325,000 loan. That's your principal. So right here, that's the principal. Okay, it's a 15 year mortgage. There's the term length. Usually home loans, uh, they start at 15 years, then go to 20 and then 30. Most people like me usually do a 30 year fixed loan because the longer the loan, the smaller the monthly payment. And when you're calculating loans for let's say a $600,000 house, we're talking about thousands of dollars. So usually people go for a 30 year fix versus a 15 because that would be a huge monthly payment. The APR is uh, given right here. So that's known. There's your R value. So R is equal to 0 0.053. There's your interest rate. Uh, T, the T is number of years, which is 15 in this case. Here we go. And this says use the mortgage and interest formulas to complete the two month amortization table. Okay. This is what happens to your, your payment and what happens to the principal over time. That's what the amortization table is all about. Okay, so your beginning balance, that's what you start with. So let's, we, we know the principal is 325,000. So we start with that. It's a $325,000 home. We got to calculate the monthly payment. So that means we got to go off to the side. So here we go. This is what we just did on number four. So if you guys want to refer to number four, be my guest. Okay, so this is $325,000 loan. Again, we're going to use the monthly payment formula that we did used in number four. So refer, uh, refer to number four on this one. And you guys should be working ahead of me right now. So it's R divided by N. So 0 0.053 divided by N, which is 12. It's a monthly number here. So N is always 12 because we'll always pay monthly. It's always done like that in a bank. So it's always divided by 12 because N's and refers to the number of times compounded, which is in this case, 12 for 12 months, times one plus the interest rate 0 0.053 divided by 12 raised to some power. Now let's pause here. The power is N times T. This is a 15 year mortgage. T equals 15 years. We need to know how many months that is though. So can you guys help me out with that? You need to know, start calculating right now, how many months there are in 15 years. Shannon says 180 months. You guys agree or disagree with that? Okay, 15, uh, 15 years times 12 is 180. Shannon, very good. So let's write that out, 180 months. So we're gonna raise this to the 180th power. I highlighted it right there. It's always the number of months, the exponent, okay? Divided by uh, one plus 0 0.053 divided by 12 raised to, again, the 180 power again, same exponent. And do not forget to subtract one minus one. Okay, get to work on Desmos. Got to calculate the monthly payment. Okay, I'm not going to finish my calculation here. Uh, I need some uh, assistance here. Alyssa, can you help me out with the, the monthly payment? What are you coming up with here? Yeah, I'm almost done with it. Okay, let me know when you're ready. And then I'll verify your number here when you're ready.
I still have to subtract one, so I'm not done yet. I don't know if this is right because I've been typing in everything correctly, but it's just a few numbers off, but I got 2,621.15. Good job. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, so $2,621.15, so that's very good, Alyssa. So 2621.15, awesome. Okay, now part of this goes to interest and part of it goes to principal. Let's take this number and let's bring it over. So what did we just say? So 26, 21. Okay, that's the monthly payment. Now part of it goes to interest, part of it goes to principal. And then this is where you need to refer to number four, okay? Because we just did this earlier. So we know the monthly payment. Now we need to figure out what one month's worth of interest, okay? And because we're gonna be doing two rows of this table, I'm gonna call this I1 for the first interest payment. Okay, so label your interest payments because we're gonna have to calculate two in this problem, okay? For the first month and then the second one's gonna be different. So the interest payment, it's again, principal times rate times time, PRT, P times R times T. So we've got the loan amount, which is 325,000 times the interest rate, 0 0.053, times the fraction of the year. This is for one month. Remember, T is always in years. So we're gonna use 1 12th as our fraction of the year because we're dealing with one month here. So go ahead and start calculating this. This is the interest payment. And obviously this number is gonna be smaller than our monthly payment. So out of this monthly uh, number here, we're gonna calculate some interest. So Natalie, you can help me out on this one here if when you're ready. Oh, are we trying to find the interest? Yeah, this part right here, okay. just the interest for one month. I got 1,435.42. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so out of our monthly payment, we're paying 2621.15 or 26, a little over $2,600 every month. That doesn't change. This is constant. Let's write the word constant down. This number does not change. It's constant. It's going to remain the same for the life of the loan. Okay, so write down constant there. Out of this payment, we're going to pay the bank $1,435.42. That's called the interest payment. That goes directly to the bank. That does not pay off the loan. Okay, so that goes in the table. Let's put that in here. Okay, so $1,435.42. Okay, there's your interest payment. Now, the just like in number four, part of it goes to the principal to pay off the loan. So we're gonna call this P1 because, uh, because we have to calculate the principal twice. So label this P1, principal one. So out of the monthly payment, okay, which is 26, 21, 15, you're gonna pay that each month. Part of it goes to interest, the rest goes to principal. So you gotta subtract the uh, interest payment, which is 14, 35, 42. So I need you guys to work on that there. The rest of this, so when you take your monthly payment, you subtract the interest, the rest goes to principal, and this is the amount that gets paid off on the loan. Garrett, can you help me out with this one, please? When you're ready, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah, one second. Okay, let me know when you're ready. I got uh, 1,185.73. Say it one more time. Uh, 1,185.73. Oh, 
let's check uh check your calculator here. let's enter it in together okay so okay. 26 21 let's redo the calculator calculation so 2600 21 dollars 15 cents minus 1435 i'm doing it with you on, on my screen here oh okay yeah i agree okay so you said 1185 yeah okay then i agree with you i'm sorry i just miss uh misheard you i guess so one thousand one hundred eighty-five dollars and seventy-three cents. Okay, that goes in the table. Thank you, Gary. That was good. Let's bring it over here. One thousand one hundred eighty-five seventy-three. There we go. So less goes to towards principal. This is the amount, you guys, that gets goes towards the loan. So your your balance, your loan balance. We started off with a three hundred twenty-five thousand dollar loan. Now we're going to pay it off, pay it down by eleven $1 hundred. $85.73. So the ending balance, here we go. This is, uh, let's call it ending balance is EB, let's say. So ending balance number one, again, this is for the first row. We got to take our starting balance, which is 325,000 and subtract, all right, this, uh, this principle right here. So $1,185.73. And we will get the last balance, okay? or the ending balance after the first month. So what, it's still a big number, but what is it? Okay, so let me have someone else. Braden, help me out with this one here, buddy, when you're ready. Take the beginning balance, the original amount of the loan, subtract the principal. What do we get? Uh, one sec. Uh, yeah, just let me know when you're ready. Three hundred twenty-three thousand eight hundred fourteen point two seven. Yeah, there you go. 0.26.27. Yeah, that's good. So three hundred, oh, three hundred uh, and twenty-three thousand. You said eight hundred fourteen dollars, and did you say twenty-seven cents? Yeah. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, it's either twenty-six cents or twenty-seven cents. So that's good. So that's your ending balance after month number one. So let's put it up here in the table. Okay, that's what we still have to pay off in the beginning of month number two. So let's highlight these two cells right here. That's the amount that you start off with down here. So in the month number two, you still have to pay off that amount. So let's bring that down in row number two. That's the beginning balance in month number two. So the ending balance in month one becomes the beginning balance in month number two. And then we, what we do is we repeat the calculations, okay? Same calculations, but we, now we have a new beginning balance because we're paying off the loan. You want this loan amount to go down, not go up, right? You got to pay off the house. So each month, the, the ending balance better go down. Does that make sense? Because you guys are paying off the loan. The same thing happens with a car, by the way. Okay. Uh, now the monthly payment doesn't ch change. So bring the monthly payment down. It's still $2,621.15. $2, Write down the word constant. The monthly payment does not change. So we do not need to redo the calculation because that's what you're going to pay for the life of the loan. That's what I meant by constant. Now the interest towards it changes. Okay, so what we need to do is calculate the new interest payment, or so we're going to call that I number two. Now, the procedures in the setup is all the same, but the principal now is not $325,000. It's less than that. It's $323,814. So you have a new beginning balance. So here we go, $323,814. Uh, $814.27 times the interest rate, 0 0.053. And we want to calculate it for one month. So the fraction of the year is 112. So let's get our next interest payment. Now, the interest payment should go down over time and the principal payment should go up. So... Matthew, are you working with me? 
So you gotta, can you help me out with this one? So we need to calculate this next interest payment, I2. It should be uh, smaller than I1, just by a few dollars, okay? The interest payment should go down and the principal payment should go up. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is a little bit less than the previous value. Let me know what you're getting, Matthew, when you're ready. Okay, I came up with 18 cents or, but let's, let's, uh, let's just compare. Yeah, 18 cents. So let's just compare. So $323,817 and 27 cents, right? Times the interest rate, 0 0.053 uh, divided by 12. Okay, so where did I make a mistake here? Let me see. Oh, got to put the right numbers in. There we go. Okay. Oh, there you go. 1430 and then 18 cents, Matthew. Okay. So $1,430 and 18 cents. Notice that the, when you compare the interest I1 to I2, the interest payments are going down and the principal payments better go up. Okay. Because you want to pay off this loan. So we got I2 now. So 14. 14, 30, and then 18 cents. Notice that it's smaller than the previous one. This should happen. Make a little note on your, uh, on your, uh, in your workbooks, okay? Interest payments should go down over time. Principal payments should go up over time. And that's a good way to check your work because if they're not, then you're doing something wrong. So make a little note to yourself. Interest payments should go down over time. Principal payments should go up over time because you got to pay off this loan, guys. And the only way for that to happen is if your principal payments go up. Okay, speaking of that, we got to calculate it. Okay, so here we go. Principal payment, P2. Okay, we're going to take our monthly payment. That doesn't change. And we got to subtract our interest payment. Now, this principal payment, P2, better be a little bit bigger than P1. Shannon, can you help me out with that one? You're doing a good job participating. Let's keep it up. Yeah, that one's going to be um, for principal, right? The second one? Yeah, P2. Yeah, it's 1,000. Yeah, it's 1,190 and 97 cents. Good job. Thank you. Okay, so let's bring that up here. Now the ending balance, here we go. Ending balance number two. Okay. Well, we got to take your, the beginning balance in row number two or in the second month, which is $323,814.27 minus the principal. Okay. Which is, she just calculated it the $1,190.97. And this is the last value. And this ending balance better be lower than the previous one. So, Haven, can you help me out with this one when you're ready? Yeah, whenever you're ready. It should be a little bit less than the previous one. Uh, yeah, I got 0 0.29, but 0 0.3, 30 cents, 29 cents. Uh, that's close enough. You guys, who is everybody coming up with 29 cents or 30 cents? 30 cents, 30 cents. What, guys, what are you guys coming up with? In, in Haven, what'd you say? 30 cents? Okay. Okay. I'll go with what you have. Okay. Let's pause here because this is the essence of number eight, nine, and 11 we're going to skip number 10 okay so if you know if you understand really understand what we just did in number seven you should be able to do eight nine and eleven so three hundred twenty-two thousand. let me give up the uh the floor to questions
So does anybody want me to re-explain things on any part of this? I'll be happy to do it. It's like I said, if you if you understand really well number seven, you should be able to do the rest of the work. So look at all the calculations, ask yourself, do you fully understand what's going on? And if not, speak up and I'll re-explain any part of it. How are my peeps online doing? Rebecca, Natalie, and everybody, Shannon, Connor, Braden, Aaliyah, you guys doing okay? Logan, Caitlin, all you guys, Chris, Ethan, Austin, where are you there, buddy? Yes. Austin, how you doing out there? Are you following along pretty well? Yeah, I am. Okay. Okay, so let me, uh, in order to get the hang of this and make sure you're doing the right thing, everybody look online. Let me show you something one more time because it's been a while since I've shown you this. So everybody look at my screen here. I'm going to go to our main Canvas page. And I want to refresh your memory on something because uh, even I check my work when I'm, I do everything I assign. So just so you guys know, I do everything. Every single homework problem, I do. And when I do things, I check my work as I go. And to check your work, you have to have a resource. So at the very top of the modules, in the very first module, and this is what I showed you guys in the beginning of the year, at the bottom, look here, it says student workbook answers for all the chapters. I'm gonna go in here and it doesn't say chapter seven, but we're looking for the, I think it's unit five. So you might wanna write this down. Let me open up unit five solutions here. Make sure it's chapter seven. Yes, it is. Okay, so look on the screen up here, guys. So unit five, right here, there's a download button. And I suggest, and I, I've been telling you guys all year long about this, download the solutions to your desktop and you check your work as you go. It has the, all the solutions for the, the entire chapter. You wanna go to section four, obviously. And then you wanna go to the next page, number eight here. And all the ones in bold right here are the answers. And so if you're not coming up with these, then you, are making a mistake and then that means you need to come to intervention and get some help so write a little note to yourself to check your work on this download this i would do that right now as we speak put it on your desktop um, when you submit your work it should look like this right here i'm not going to give full credit to anyone unless it looks like this right here on the screen i mean you're that's why i said take out extra graph paper and do all your work scan everything put it in there because if i just see a bunch of answers I'm not going to, I'm not going to score that highly because even I can't do it without stepping things out. So we do it just like we, like I uh, presented here. Are we good? I have a question. Sure? Yeah, Mateo, bring it on. Uh, what if we used, because I used Google Sheets to answer the next few questions. Google Sheets in what respect? You're talking about an Excel spreadsheet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like to answer eight and nine because it's like a whole chart, you know? So that's what I use. So how do I like link? Should I like? So are you talking about the one that we developed last semester? No. Then share your screen. Let me see yeah. what you're talking about. So hang on, let me let me change the settings. Because you're supposed to calculate it by hand and then you can validate that with a Google Sheet if you know how to design the spreadsheet. Um, Hang on, let me just change the settings here. But let me let me see what you're talking about. Go ahead and share your screen and show me what you're what you're doing. Um, like this. Uh, by using formulas. Okay. Right. So, <laughs> so you're using. Okay, you could back it up with that. But I don't mind you checking your work with that, like that, because you you obviously learned something last semester with me because we taught how to calculate the mortgage material with the, using Google Sheets. Right. So do that, but I want you to be able to do it by hand too, because when you do your free response, you got to do it like this. So do it like this right here, and then back it up with the Google Sheet. In fact, let me show everybody what he just showed me, but I'm going to bring back what we did back uh, at the end of last semester since you brought it up. Uh, let me, let me 
fact. So let me, let's put it side by side. Okay, so everybody look at my screen here. This is the amortization that we did for a 30 year loan with a given percentage rate. And, and then this right here, Mateo, is what you're doing. You're, you put in the formulas just like we did before and you're used to generate the values, which you can. This right here, let me put it side by side. This one here, let me make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, let's see. So everybody look at my, my spreadsheet. This is what we developed together. And you'll notice that the values are the same right here. I just put in the, I put in the numbers in here just to, to compare. So yeah, you could use this, Mateo, to validate all your work. Since you remember how to use the formulas and you know how to do it all, that'd be good. But again, you have to be able to step it out and do the mathematics by hand too for the free response. Um, did you, so if we did that, would you still want me to do every single problem or should I, or could I just do like one example of each? Or actually there's only really one of each, but. Yeah, this, this these right here, the, the, the last few um, mm -hmm. don't require a whole lot. You like it, and number, number eight, you have to calculate a monthly payment. So, you know, that you have to do off to the side. Um, and again, you can do the rest of it is kind of like what we just showed you here in number seven. So do it by hand this time because it's a workbook and you can validate all your work either by using your Google Sheets or the answers that are provided, either one. Okay. And, then, and then in the future, if I do, you know, give you these questions here, you could use your skills on the Google Sheet because we went over that and use your skills on this to answer questions, uh, let's say on, uh, on a selected responses or some other issues or other problems that we have or a quiz or a test, you can validate everything using that. But right now I want you to do it by hand because I want you to learn the mathematics. Okay, so thanks for bringing that up by the way. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys some time in class to work on this. Now, here's the deal. I This week, uh, I'm scheduled today to go to the Hoke Hospital to be with my wife's father for the rest of the day. So I can't be available during intervention today. So tomorrow I will be available. So everybody write a little note. If you need help uh, on Wednesday at one, between one and three, uh, you guys can contact me. I can meet up with you tomorrow, not today, because I'll be at the hospital for the entire evening. Uh, helping him out because he needs a lot of help in the hospital. There's a lot of things to be done. He's still still in a very serious situation after brain surgery. So we got a, a family members have to be there every single night. And tonight's my turn. So I'm not going to be available tonight during intervention, but tomorrow I will. So if you guys need help on these last few problems, eight, nine, and 11, message me. I can meet up with you guys tomorrow. I'll be happy to work with you guys to help you work it out. And then you can submit it by tomorrow night. Does that sound good? Online, does that sound good? Okay, just message me and remind, I'll meet up and we'll set up a time, okay? You guys, uh, uh, good work today. I'm glad you guys showed up, keep showing up every day. All right, like I've been encouraging you guys to do. Take the rest of the period and, uh, and the rest of the day and tomorrow to work on this and complete it. And then I'll see you uh, same time on Thursday. You guys take care online. And of course, we're here together here. See you guys. And in my class, you guys can log out if you want to. Okay. And if you, when we have extra time in class, you guys feel free to work together. Okay. You guys came to school for a reason. So work together. If you have questions for me, I can help you out in class too. All right. But let's get uh, productive and let's try to work on those last few problems.
Thank you. 